prayer activates discernment helping you to escape satanic traps and calamities listen to this one prayer activates discernment helping you to escape satanic traps and calamities matthew chapter 6 and verse 13 jesus was teaching how to pray and he said lead us not into temptation someone say amen to that prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil do you know what temptation is something that connects to your desire but is intended to destroy you are we together now if you are looking for a job your temptation will come around your desire this is also how the spirit of seduction works seduction works by connecting itself to something you desire intrinsically if it is finances the devil can come through a suggestion and someone will tell you there is something you can go and wash your eyes somewhere or you can kill a human being and remove the organs unfortunately like we have it been practiced in certain places go and bow to an altar somewhere and boom you will have money now that temptation would not work if you have a certain level of wealth but because you are desperate and you are in need satan loves desperation because he fashions temptations out of your desperation are we together the wife of job was influenced by a spirit a demon spirit obviously to tempt her husband even though she was a good woman she said why hold on to your integrity curse god and die job would have said this is a good idea i mean what am i living for i've lost everything now i'm filled with all kinds of sores and to curse god and die but he said no why do you speak like one of these foolish women and he began to speak though he slay me yet will i tempt him will i will i praise him when satan came to jesus in the wilderness you know what happened because jesus was hungry having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights what was the nature of the temptation number one turn this stone to bread do something about your hunger you are too powerful to remain hungry not after your fasting is over do something about it and you would have said this is a great idea it even occurred to me that i can turn stones to bread i will not just turn stones to bread i will turn stones to fish bread and fish i say that's a healthy meal eh? some of you are already hungry bread and fish that was a very serious meal those days you had to be wealthy to have bread and fish yeah are we together and jesus rebuked satan he had the power to do it but he rebuked it satan sometimes will come and tempt you along areas where you have the power to execute what he's saying but that power of restraint you see that now discernment is very powerful you've heard me say this there is a kiss that is a sign of love but there is a kiss that is a signal to the enemy this is the one to kill so sometimes you bring your cheek to every mouth believing that every kiss is a holy kiss and for many you have received the kiss of destruction the kiss of death you get what i'm saying now yes every handshake every handshake because the person carried a carriage of a friend if you saw satan in the flesh you will want to be the friend of such a person very dexterous with a compelling persona but he's still lucifer there are many many people who will come in the appearance of light but i tell you there are devils within you will need discernment are we together satan will not come with horns he will not come wearing a black robe and red eyes. No. He will come looking like your destiny helper. He will even come prophesying to you. You need a job. And you are like, my God, he has come. But discernment. Let me give you a key. Every time your spirit restrains you, no matter how correct it is, stop. Stop at that point until prayer filters everything and explains to you why that feeling is there is someone learning now that there are times i'm not talking of fear that everything physically is correct 
and yet it can be an opportunity it can be an open door and now you're wondering how how do i i mean this good things happening but once your heart begins to disturb you even if it's in a meeting as much as you can request for time and go back to god what is the meaning of this restraint in my spirit what is the meaning of this restraint i've told you my story how i left zaria to abuja i mean it was at a point where ministry at that level was something that it would be everybody's prayer point people were coming from all over the world regardless the crisis situation i mean god was glorifying himself in a way that was very humbling and in the midst of it i will finish a powerful service and it was as if my spirit it was as if i was becoming a stranger in a place that i so loved i couldn't understand for years i kept casting and i said it's just the devil getting angry that souls were being saved but it stayed there again it stayed there again stay in prayer for as long as that feeling remains stay in prayer for as long as that feeling remains from the day i brought this man as a business partner he's a good man he's not done anything evil but why this restraint i get up in the morning and there's this restraint i need to go to the place of prayer and when you are praying praying sometimes it may not be that the individual is bad it may be that they are connected to forces that have a prophetic implication on your destiny you may not even know and then when god sets the people free you see that the restraint let me tell you this knowing of the spirit and this restraint is a powerful instrument of discernment for many people it's been the difference between life and death life and death life and death when you pray it activates discernment it helps you to escape satanic traps proverbs 14 and verse 12 I'm about to pray one more time proverbs 14 and verse 12 there is a way household of david please hear me there is a way that seemeth right unto a man it is a limitation with all men there is a way that seemeth right unto a man with all due respect and not to make you feel bad there is a way you can sit down and calculate and say by january if i relocate to canada or america someone i met one day has promised he will give me a job now you are planning honestly but if you don't submit that plan before the lord you will make many costly mistakes it is not the plan that is wrong is whether or not you see that plan in the place of prayer and god begins to edit it and says this one is in your destiny but not now the vision is correct but the timing is wrong hold on in 2013, I started having um, just a desire in my heart, 2013, to move to Abuja. You see, it was in the prophetic blueprint, but the timing was wrong. And I remember I had a vision. I saw an aircraft. The name of the ministry was written on it. It left Zaria to Abuja. Just when it was about to get to Abuja, it crashed. I knew exactly what it meant. Today you can celebrate what God is doing. It's not just a product of correct vision. It's also correct timing. There are many people failing and they will tell you but God said. There are two things you need to receive. When God speaks to you. Number one is the vision. Number two is the strategy. If you receive the vision alone, you will still fail. You need to receive the vision and the strategy. Both Joshua and Moses led the people through the jordan but the strategy was different are we together now there was a water experience with moses there was a water experience with jesus for moses his strategy was to part the sea jesus the strategy was to walk on water you can have a correct vision and use an old strategy and you find out that that vision fails as if it's not god that told you discernment right for reference we'll not read it here matthew chapter 2 from verse 1 down to 22 please go and take the time and read that scripture many people have made a shipwreck of their destinies 
because they are unable to access discernment and discernment does not have to be towards evil alone you can discern that this is the opportunity you can discern have you seen somebody and you know that there's something that i should receive from this man's destiny i don't know the person i don't know you from adam and strangely you find the person looking at you in such a way and said, have I met you before? He said, you've not met me. Oh, me too. The way I'm looking at you like that. He says, is deep calling on to deep. Deep calling on to deep. Where do you work? NMPC. Ah, I've been trying to see your boss. He's my elder brother. Now you see. Deep calling on to deep. Deep calling on to deep. This has happened so many times. So many times. I wonder how many opportunities that would have led to restoration that many of us have lost because you did not discern. You didn't discern seasons. You didn't discern people. You didn't discern opportunities. Seasons. People. Opportunities. Hallelujah. My charge for you as we pray is to cry that this theme restoration must happen in my life. And that these are the prayer forces. Are we together? That the ministry of angels must be activated in my life. That I will use my will in the place of prayer to make quality scriptural choices and decisions. Is someone learning now? Very, very powerful. Very important. So that you don't just say restoration as a theme, but that you see it work in your life. And that you activate your perception of hearing. Spirit of the living God, speak to me. My family is in trouble. What do I do? How do I go from here? Do I leave Lagos just because I do not have a job? And just when you want to leave honorably, the Spirit of God says, hold on. You are three days left to your open doors. Three days left. Three days left. I believe, even though the Bible did not say it, I believe that Joseph must have had an inclination in his heart. Walk up to this wine presser. Ask them what is wrong with them. Walk up to the baker. Ask them what is wrong with them. And he established that relationship and it later spoke concerning his life. These are the prayer forces, ladies and gentlemen, that help people to look invincible even though they are ordinary people. You can command restoration by engaging the force of strategic prayer. Who understood me so far? Prayer. Now, I want you to look at your life in one moment as we prepare to pray. Look at the areas in your life that require restoration because these are the areas you're going to be engaging in praying. Some of you, all through this year, from January till now, the truth is that you've lost money. January, you lost money. February, you lost money. By March, it was looking like a breakthrough. You ran into that investment and lost money again. It tells you something is wrong with your discernment. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Some of you, the worst relationships in your life, you entered them this year. May not necessarily be love relationships. You join wrong chariots in one month. It tore your life like 10 years. It's time for you to access this ability. Some of you, you watch opportunities. It came in a, in a guise that you could not discern. And you watch the opportunity just leave you like that. And now you are regretting. I was with this man for three hours. And something was telling me, greet him. Ask him if you want something. You did not know that was the CEO of a company that could help you. For three hours, you were in the aircraft with him. Seated by his side. And the spirit of God was telling you, this is your moment. Just greet him, sir. And say, I've seen you on TV. But... You lost courage and you didn't have discernment. As soon as he dropped, he said, you've just lost five years in 50 minutes of carelessness. Who is learning? I can tell you stories, how my life changed, how I met strategic people and Kairos moments that if I lost those opportunities, I would have paid a huge price. Paid a huge price. Paid a huge price. I remember a man years ago, he's now gone to be with the Lord. One time I met him, immediately I saw him, I sensed in my spirit that he was not going to live very long again. And I had the honor of sowing into his life 
and to ask him to pray for me then. And he spoke over my life. It wasn't too long. And then he went to be with the Lord. I said, thank you, Jesus, for this privilege. I want you to really examine your life. What have I lost because I didn't hear God? What opportunity, what grace, even for those of you who are in ministry, could it be what chariot did I join that has misled me and caused a lot of trouble in my life? What of businessmen? What of career people? Is it true that God is that unfaithful? No. You have not understood the dynamics. But the good thing is that if you cannot enjoy progress, you can enjoy restoration. If you lost the opportunity to have made progress, God spoke to you by his word. God spoke to you by his servant that this year you will experience advancement. But you are yet to see it because you did not know how to engage it. You can imagine the angel saying, engage us. We are here to serve. We are here to serve. You get up in the morning, no prayer. You get up in the night, no prayer. Prayer meetings just when you want to come, the devil uses a friend to distract you because he sees glory coming until you fail. Then he says you can now go for the prayer meeting because the goal was to stop you from entering a Kairos season. Someone begin to pray in the spirit while you are seated. Get angry within your spirit. Restoration by engaging strategic prayer, discernment, activating angels, making decrees by the Spirit. Are there people who are people of prayer here? Just a few minutes for us to pray. Some of you, before the evening service, you will already be returning with strange testimonies. You will see that the angels were always ready to walk. They excel in strength. They excel in strength. Someone pray. This issue of joblessness, I am tired of it. It is over. God, you are faithful. You are faithful. You can give me a testimony. A man of God, pray. It's time for God to open the two leaf gates of ministry. Give you visibility. Give you access. Alenda bereto savra kapalaka tabras, rakata branda kapereke palaka parato savras. Hallelujah, praise God. Now, please lend me a few minutes. My apologies, I know I've stretched you a bit. Isaiah thirty-two and verse fifteen. Hmm. Isaiah thirty-two and verse fifteen. I just saw a vision. That's why I'm reading this scripture. I just saw like a farmland desert and then I saw something growing that's why I said we should go to this scripture until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness a place of emptiness a place of dryness a place bankrupt of opportunity and beauty and color the Bible says it shall be a fruitful field and then the fruitful field can go to the next level where it becomes a forest for some of you you are at the wilderness level some of you have experienced a bit a fruitful field but god wants to make you a forest and we are going to pray along this line remember what paul taught us that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of christ jesus Open your mouth in one minute and begin to declare over every wilderness. Come on, a believer, pray. You desire genuine testimonies, pray. Every wilderness, financial wilderness, ministerial wilderness, household of David, pray. Relational wilderness, everything that looks like dryness in my life, dryness in my destiny dryness in my career hear the word of the lord become a fruitful field and from a fruitful field a forest
Sadis ke baranta ke prakata bela ke paras. Sheda bela ke prakata branda ke perakatos. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to speak. Take a minute to declare. Please pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Now please look up. I didn't have the time to read for you Matthew chapter 2. But Pastor Shola, it was a rendition of how Jesus escaped death as a baby. The Bible says when the wise men heard, they saw a star. And when they saw a star, they carried gifts and were taken to Jesus. And when Herod heard about it, the Bible says it troubled Herod. How can an old man who had years left be troubled by the birth of a baby? Because, I mean, he, he most likely was his grandfather. So before Jesus would become an adult, he would have died. He would have been secured enough. But the Bible says it troubled him greatly. There are people who don't need what you need, but they are troubled that you have it. They don't need the job, but it should not be you. They don't need the promotion, but it should not be you. They don't need the lifting, but it should not be you. They are already blessed, but you should not be included. Come on now. Is someone ready to pray? Now hear me. The Bible says when the men came and met Herod, Herod said, ah, he called on his wise men. They said, it's true. There is a prophecy like that, that a baby will be born. He now told the wise men, he said, when you find him and drop the gift, please come this route. Me too, I want to go and worship him. And the Bible says, being warned in a dream. I'm going somewhere. Being warned in a dream. He said, be careful. This man seems to look like he's a good man, but there is a motive to destroy. Being warned in a dream. After they went and did their due diligence to Jesus, watch this. The Bible tells us that when they were about to return, again a dream came follow another route because if you go to pharaoh both you you will be the first to die there follow another route and when pharaoh saw herod saw that they had gone to, the bible said he was angry and he decided to kill every child are we together now and whilst they were about to kill every child the lord told joseph in a dream he said take the child to egypt Go and keep him there. There was a cry in Rama. They killed all kinds of children. Just like Moses, Jesus was hid in Egypt. Until Pharaoh died. Then the angel now came in a dream again. And said, you can return back. They that want the life of the child, they are dead. But the Bible says he was afraid and said, even the person who is sitting now, is the son of that man is also bad and he gave him another strategy you know the prayer lord every organ that can allow me receive the communication of the spirit every channel whether it's dreams whether it's visions let it be activated for my profiting that i will not lose my kairos moment if it's a dream purify my dreams show me the future someone pray if it's visions open my eyes to see oh god if it's the spirit of counsel coming through scripture guide me lead me in the way that i should go someone pray i'm tired of making mistakes tired of falling into traps that destroy there is a way that cement right onto a man someone please pray lord purify my dreams purify my visions no more dreams that mislead no more lying visions no more dreams that mislead no more lying visions purify my spiritual experiences that what i see will be consistent with what you are saying man of god pray many have acted out their dreams many have acted out visions they saw to their detriment purify my experiences purify my experiences where your dream has been hijacked by familiar spirits and they bring you scenarios through a dream 
scenarios through visions you obey those visions and you find out that you are against the will of God many have been misled many have been deceived many have crash landed because of what they saw because of what they heard because of what they perceived Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you the final prayer point. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, we still have other serious discussions in subsequent sessions. But let me say this as a last prayer point. When God wants to bring restoration, still I'm talking about prayer. There are times it is not your prayer. Philippians 1.19 But I know that this shall turn to my salvation. I am the one in need of the salvation. But the truth is that I'm too weak to pray. It is your prayer that helps me. There are times where you may not have the level of spiritual intelligence to engage profitably in the spirit when God wants to give, show you mercy he transfers the burden of your breakthrough to a more experienced believer and leaves the person to stay there on your case it is your salvation but it is my prayer who is learning he says this shall turn to my salvation but through your prayer he said brethren pray for us now listen every believer must be trained to pray but let me submit to you by the integrity of scripture. There are certain challenges that require high level of spiritual intelligence to navigate the paths in the spirit. A combination of authority, covenant with God and the track record of a staying power. And if God depends on your spiritual growth at that point, that prayer may never be answered because you are at a loss as to what dynamics to engage. At such points, the grace of God takes your burden and takes it to a believer that has a greater stature in the spirit and drops that burden upon the person. Are we together now? This is one of the blessedness of having intercessors. No matter how anointed you are, there are times that it will take the brethren to pray for you. Because the dynamics, the kind of warfare you need to engage in sometimes. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this because I want to speak over your life. It is good for you to pray, but let me submit to you. Don't get to a point where you ignore the contribution of graces as far as commanding restoration is concerned. He said they are taken for a pray and none say yet restore. There has to be a voice that says restore. Even if you are a professor of medicine, the day they are about to perform a surgery on you, it may even be your student who will perform that surgery. Yes, you are a professor, but hence you are on the bed. You will lie down quietly and allow another to treat you. Your knowing God personally is an advantage, but there are gifts he has put within the body as systems of his mercy. I want to speak over someone. God is in a hurry. He will not even wait for the session in the evening. He wants to change the tides over somebody's destiny. Who is ready to receive? In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. He said, and I know this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. Let me stand by the privilege of God's mercy to pray for you. That in the name of Jesus Christ, every obstacle that has refused to move over your life. In the name of Jesus, by this grace, by this anointing, 
by the privilege of the election of grace let that mountain give way now 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 financial mountains give way now relational mountains give way now i speak to you may the god of my covenant arise for you arise for you arise for you arise for you arise for your children arise for you in the name of jesus hallelujah i read a scripture in the bible it was in the book of joshua but the lord ministered that scripture to me it was a word with god and it's one of my covenants with god it says no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life i stand upon the grace in this house and i speak to someone men and systems fighting prophecy over your life in the name of jesus because you came for this restoration conference i declare they clear out of your way 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 in the name of jesus he said thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side i pray for you where you have been stagnated you have been in one position from january till now in ministry stagnated finances stagnated by the word of prophecy i speak to you go forward 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 upon mount zion it says upon mount zion listen carefully there shall be deliverance and holiness then the sons of jacob shall possess not be aware of their possession there is a grace to be aware but there is grace to possess i pray for you everything you are already aware of that is in your prophetic destiny i release grace to possess grace to possess the job you have seen in your dream the grace to possess the properties you have seen the grace to possess the territories you have seen the grace to possess the dimensions in the spirit you have seen the grace to possess the grace to possess in lagos go and possess in the name of jesus christ he told joseph you can now come out of your hiding those who seek the life of your child have gone everything that seeks your life your health your relevance your influence in the name of jesus let it give way now